What's up everyone? I'm Noah, the human at least behind Myco Lyco. I've been getting asked a lot of questions about various different things and today I'm here to talk about growing cordyceps in the left terrace. So this is some cordyceps that I've grown in a jar and that's what I'm going to be doing today is growing some cordyceps in jars. So what I'm actually doing today is I'm making uh, seven different jars with some test cultures um, and I'll talk about that briefly, but if you're just getting started growing cordyceps, I would really recommend purchasing your culture and two great sources in the United States at least are Appalachian Gold and Terrestrial Fungi. Um, I get my cultures from Terrestrial Fungi. Um, this particular culture is actually sort of a collab between them because Ryan from Terrestrial Fungi uh, used a culture from Appalachian Gold and did some crossbreeding with some of his and got this one, which is a CZ uh, cross to the mound for if you're looking for that. It's a really nice culture. Um, over here we have some agar plates that I've been working on. I uh, found some cordyceps back in July and I've been selectively transferring them ever since and I have recently put them onto agar and then into liquid culture. So let's dive in a little bit uh, more. Okay, so here you can see the cultures a little bit better that I put on agar. These are, I think I've transferred about seven times now. And when I'm transferring them, I'm always transferring for the most pigmented section. Um, so this was all transferred from one agar plate to make uh, like eight agar plates. And of those, I transferred these three into liquid culture because you can see these ones, um, let's get some light on them, have a little bit more pigmentation than the uh, the other ones. This one I made three different liquid cultures for. This is the one that I'm most excited about. And you can see up here it's starting to uh, to pin a little bit, which means that this is a really good one. And I transferred these about two weeks ago to liquid culture. And the, the liquid cultures have been in my fridge for about a week because you really want to use them within the first 10 days or get them in the fridge once you get a liquid culture going. And then here's an example, one that I didn't transfer from that I'll probably just hook up to my synthesizers because this one didn't have very much pigmentation. And so by selectively transferring the pigmented sections, you can, um, you can strengthen your culture. But we don't really need to worry about that that much. That's just what I'm doing in particular, which is why I have so many jars of liquid culture to go because uh, those are each slightly different uh, either sections of a plate so I took the three most promising plates and made at least one liquid culture from all of those. And the most promising looking plate, I made three different liquid cultures for. And I'm going to put those all into jars and let them see which one fruits. And that's the one that I will do more growing from. This guy here is actually from the previous transfer. Um, I put some to liquid culture then. And it's going exceptionally beautifully. So I am um, really excited for these new transfers because they should be even better. So let's get a, a little bit into the nitty gritty of how I'm going to do this because pretty soon I'm going to be turning on the flow hood and I'm probably not going to talk anymore because you won't be able to hear me. Uh, normally if I was working with bags or anything that's not in jars, I would have a face mask on, gloves, and my hair back. But because this is uh, jars, I'm just going to wipe everything down with alcohol and with the flow hood going and a syringe, you should be fine. If you don't have a flow hood, you can easily use a glove box. It'll work fine. And honestly, you could probably get away working in, in jars just with uh, flame sterilization. So that's pretty cool. The recipe that I'm gonna use is a recipe from Appalachian Gold. It's his, Jeff's egg recipe. And what you do is you take three eggs, throw them in the blender, blend them up, add in a tablespoon of yeast and a tablespoon of liquid malt extract, blend that together, and then you're gonna to top it off to 500 milliliters. Super easy, super fast. And then what you wanna do is you wanna weigh out 35 grams of brown rice per quart jar. These here are, uh, are, are pint jars uh this here is, is your quart jar so this is this is that recipe right here um so you want to do 35 mil 35 grams of uh brown rice and about 50 to 60 grams or milliliters of the solution not including the foam um and then what you do is you take your liquid culture which you want to make in a jar um and you're going to inoculate 10 cc's of liquid culture per jar of rice, which is a ton of liquid culture if you've ever done any other mushroom cultivation. Normally you'll put like one cc in for an entire jar like this filled up to the brim. So 10 cc's for just this tiny amount um, is pretty nuts, but that's how cordycepes like to roll. Um, for the liquid culture, basically you need to make your own liquid culture, which you could do like 3% honey would work. I generally do like 1.5% dextrose, 1.5% uh, liquid malt extract, and then 1.5% um, 
starch and I add some um, glacial rock dust and calcium. But um, you can find all these recipes on the Facebook Cordyceps Cultivation Group um, to do your own stuff. And so the liquid culture, uh, you want to get it started with, you can use one cc from your master syringe, or if you're working from agar plates, you put your agar wedge in, um, and you want to use it uh, within 10 days. It's normally ready within four days. So that four to 10 day uh, window is when you want to use it or get it in the fridge. So now, uh, without further ado, I'm going to turn on the flow hood and uh, open up my pressure cooker. Oh, right, pressure cooking. Yeah, so once you have the jars uh, filled with the solution and the rice, you are going to pressure cook them for 90 minutes. You can put uh, aluminum foil over the top, helps keep everything clean, especially if you're not working with a flow hood. I do it anyways, just because old habits die hard, and I've only been working with a flow hood for a little bit. Um, yep, so without further ado, I'm going to do the rest. Uh, it'll probably be sped up or time lapsed or something, or maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, and that's that. Thank you all for watching so much. Please like and subscribe. Uh, I mostly just hook synthesizers up to weird things, but I'll probably also have a few mushroom cultivation videos sprinkled in here and there. All right, so I just looked at the footage that I took of me inoculating them and it came out terrible because I was standing in the way. So I'm just going to cut it up and there'll be little bits of it, which you probably just saw. So this is silly audio right here. But so it goes. Anyways, this is not meant to be like a uh, full tutorial. I just kind of wanted to give you guys a little bit of a look and insight into what I'm doing. So basically, I'm putting 10 cc's of liquid culture on a, some supplemented rice and, uh, in jars and you get some cordyceps that way. All right, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this or you want to see these cordyceps later being connected to synthesizers, make sure to like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Thank you so much. Bye.